Good afternoon uh, from uh, London. It's a bleak and somewhat dark uh, November afternoon here in London. And hello from me, Dr. Dermot Hudson, the chairman of the British Group for the Study of the Duce Idea, chairman of the UK Korean French Association, and official delegate of the Korean French Association for the UK and president of the Association for the Study of Songum Politics UK. I'm here today uh, to talk about the book that I've just published on lulu.com, uh, which is titled The Famine That Never Was, The Democratic People's Republic of Korea in the Arduous March Period, The Myth of the Famine in the DPRK Exposed. And as I'll be talking a little bit uh, later about the uh, publishing details of the book. Uh, you know, it's a, a, a fact uh, that, uh, you know, defending uh, people's career uh, is uh, very controversial in the uh, Western imperialist countries. And you get flack not only from the establishment... Uh, but also some on the uh, fake uh, left and even even some self-identified uh, communists. And this channel, uh, along with the UK Korean French Association, uh, the British Group for the Study of the Duce Idea and the Association for the Study of the Song and Politics, uh, uh, defends people's career with no ifs or buts. And... I've published the uh, book in the spirit of defending people's career with a no ifs or buts. Uh, it was a project that I first thought of uh, back, uh, would you believe, in 1996, uh, when I'd been on a visit uh, to uh, the DPRK, uh, leading a delegation of the Jitch Idea study group of England which is now the British group for the uh, study of the Duke idea uh, there were two of us on the delegation myself and comrade uh, Sean Pickford the uh, who is the leader of uh, the Staffordshire branch of the Korean French Association and the uh, Secretary General of the British group for the study of the Duke idea uh, we stayed at the Duce Idea Academy just outside uh, Pyongyang. And uh, while we were visiting the DPRK, uh, basically we did not see anything that looked uh, like uh, famine. And, uh, you know, when we were speaking to DPRK officials, they said we must uh, go back and tell people the true uh, situation about uh, people's career so I resolved to do that and at the time I thought about actually uh, writing a book called The Famine That Never Was to expose uh, the propaganda of the imperialists uh, however uh, what with one thing or another and different events uh, you know I was not able to do uh, that I did, however, uh, much later, uh, publish uh, a book called Behind the Mirror of Lies, exposing anti-DPRK uh, propaganda, and that is still available on lulu.com. Uh, but this uh, book here uh, is specifically about the period in the 1990s and the allegations of, uh, uh, of a massive uh, famine in the DPRK and even today uh, you know many you know over two decades uh, later uh, some uh, sections of the bourgeois mainstream media and the tabloid press will still say uh, oh but everyone's starving in in North Korea and you know when we've done uh, public work in support of the DPRK we still are uh, here people say oh but they're all starving which is simply not true uh it's not true now and you know really it wasn't even true at uh, the time 
Now, you know, I know there are some, you know, sympathisers of the DPRK who will say, you know, but that, you know, there was a famine. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, and, you know, some on the left, uh, you know, say, say that. Uh, but the, the thing is, uh, a food shortage caused by flooding is, is not the same as a famine which means an extreme acute and generalized uh, food shortage and you know if you look back on history well uh, Ireland in the 1840s uh, had a famine which uh, killed many people resulted in mass emigration uh, from Ireland and uh, you know it is said that the uh, country never really uh, fully recovered uh, from that. Famines uh, also uh, bring about uh, mass upheavals. For example, uh, the Ethiopian famine in the 1970s uh, caused the overthrow of the reactionary uh, feudal monarch uh, Haile Selassie and the uh, rep uh, replacement of the Ethiopian uh, reactionary regime by new revolutionary regime uh, led by uh, Colonel uh, Me uh, Mengistu Hali Mariam. Uh, you know, and that's uh, just one example of, uh, you know, the, the upheavals that uh, a real uh, famine would cause. Now, I think, uh, you know, some people at the time uh, believed the imperialist propaganda about the famine because, uh, you know, they lacked uh, no knowledge and understanding of the DPRK. It was down to misunderstanding. And, you know, there's uh, several uh, wrong views uh, of the DPRK, even on, on the left. I mean, one uh, is to... Uh, see the DPRK as a, a very uh, backward and undeveloped uh, country uh, you know ignoring the fact that in fact it is an industrial state uh, DPRK had industrialized in the 50s and 60s or to uh, see the DPRK as a dependency of the Soviet Union and China and I think you know some people thought that um, once the Soviet Union uh, went, uh, the DPRK would follow or would uh, suffer from a very uh, severe uh, difficulties. But, you know, people uh, like that, you know, fail to sort of recognise that, you know, DPRK uh, is uh, not a copy of another country. Uh, it's not a dependency of another uh, another country uh, you know it is uh, you know its own master uh, it is uh, Duce socialism it is based on uh, self uh, reliance and as I say when I, I visited the DPRK in June 1996 we didn't know uh, what we were going to uh, see or find when we arrived in uh, the DPRK, uh, you know, there were reports in the imperialist media about uh, uh, a famine. Uh, there was even reports that the DPRK was actually going to collapse. And I think these appeared about uh, one or two months before we uh, travelled uh, to the DPRK. And when we arrived in the DPRK, we saw absolutely uh, nothing uh, like uh, that at all. Uh, we didn't see anyone starving. We didn't see people begging. We didn't see people raiding dustbins uh, for food. Uh, we, we didn't even see uh, long queues at outside shops, nothing like that. Uh, and you know we did visit uh, other parts of uh, of the DPRK, not just uh, Pyongyang. Uh, and uh, we even visited a uh, farm, and uh, there we saw two 
uh, tall uh, maize uh, plants uh, growing and I, I can rem <coughs> remember my uh, friend uh, comrade Sean Pickford uh, you know m uh, mimicking an American reporter saying oh this is Doug Turner from CNN I'm here at the Sunan farm and everyone's starving uh, you know because that's how uh, ridiculous the uh, reports of uh, uh, of famine uh, were. You know, we uh, say there was nothing like it. Uh, we saw well-fed, uh, well-dressed children at the uh, Changwon Kindergarten and, and, and at the Menyong Day School Children's Palace. When we got back home, uh, we... Uh, you know, resolved to tell the truth about the DPRK, uh, but it was very hard. No one would listen. I sent an article to a left-wing newspaper, but uh, they wouldn't publish it at the time. And uh, some people just wouldn't listen to us. Uh, you know, they, uh, you know, thought the only thing to do was to send food uh, to the uh, DPRK. Uh, you know, instead of organising a campaign to uh, tell the truth about the country. And uh, it's a fact that uh, at the time, you know, uh, the imperialists and their NGOs, uh, they did want to try and use the food issue in the DPRK uh, to uh, overthrow socialism. You know, they wanted... Uh, to make the DPRK an aid dependency of imperialism. They wanted to force uh, opening up and reform on the DPRK using uh, the food issue as a form of uh, leverage. Uh, however, uh, Chairman Kim Jong-il uh, did not uh, bow down. Uh, he declared... Uh, just before the arduous March period started, he declared, uh, expect no change from me. And he continued uh, with building uh, socialism, uh, despite the uh, immense difficulties, uh, you know, which were not only the food shortage, but uh, intensified uh, sanctions and blockades by the imperialists uh, and uh, also the uh, disappearance of the socialist camp and the uh, world socialist market and uh, also things like uh, China demanding the settlement of foreign trade accounts uh, in uh, in dollars which uh, made things very uh, difficult uh, for the DPRK but uh, the DPRK uh, continued with socialist construction uh, it completed the uh, Anbyong, uh power station and a number of construction projects during that difficult period and even launched uh, the first artificial earth satellite of the DPRK in August uh, 1998 you know and uh, you know you ask can a country uh, where everyone's starving can, uh, can such a country uh, do uh, such a thing and of course the, the answer is no uh, you know, because, uh, you know, pe people were uh, not uh, starving as as claimed. And, uh, yeah, there's various uh, figures bandied about, uh, you know, with the supposed number of uh, deaths uh, in uh, DPRK. Uh, some sources talking about... Uh, three million and others one million uh, and I think this uh, proves itself uh, proves that the uh, figures are false uh, because the fact that they cannot uh, sort of agree on the figures you know just shows you know that this is all uh, made up and in fact uh, as I've uh, stated uh, before in a number of places and it's uh, in this book Ah, uh, let just find it. Mm. 
the actual population statistics from the DPRK are from the World Bank and other imperialist sources actually show the population of the DPRK increasing during the period of the arduous march. It did not decrease or mark time. And uh, to me, this proves clearly that there was no actual uh, famine in the DPRK in the 1990s. A food shortage, yes. Uh, difficulties created by natural disasters, yes. And difficulties created by external factors, yes. But uh, there was no uh, mass starvation, there was no uh, chaos and in internal disruption that would uh, occur in a in an actual famine situation uh, so you know this was absolute uh, rubbish and you know that's what I've argued uh, in this book uh, it's been published on lulu.com uh, uh, now you know it's been published uh, in the hardcover form uh, hardcover format uh, which makes the book uh, rather expensive uh, we're hoping to uh, shortly uh, republish it uh, in a, a cheaper uh, format to make it more widely available. And I would also just mention my other uh, books. My two bestsellers are Career of Duce and In Defence of Duce Career. Uh, so, you know... I hope uh, people uh, will uh, read the new book. Uh, we could also make a uh, PDF of it freely available uh, for those who cannot afford to buy it. Anyway, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for looking at, at this uh, video. Uh, stay safe, friends, and have a good day. Goodbye.